Hey everyone! So this is the, I think, fifth or sixth episode of my Makeup for Beginners series. I polled you guys on Instagram. Those of you who follow me on Instagram, I'll put my Instagram down below if you want to follow me there too. I asked if you wanted to see an easy smoky eye or a makeup starter kit and it was a tie. So I thought it would be really fun this week to do like something like a makeup starter kit. I know I haven't done very many tutorials in the last little while, but I'm going to do a bunch of tutorials and put them up while I'm away. So oh, don't worry, there are more tutorial tutorials coming soon for those of you who watch me for my makeup tutorials. For today's video, we're just going to go through, like if you are a beginner at makeup and you have nothing, like you're starting from nothing or very little, and you're just not really quite sure like, what you need or where to start. And that's pretty normal. Like I've had so many people come to me, both in my freelance business and when I'm working at Mac and just in my general life when people find out that I do makeup and they're like, okay, I don't know anything about makeup, what do I buy? And it's like, okay, well, what do you have? And they're like, I have nothing. Like, a lot of people don't have much, or they have, you know, makeup that's been given to them through friends or family or whoever. So I'm just going to go through, like, some very basic things for what you can be looking for, and hopefully you guys find this video helpful. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Megan. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so let's jump into it. So every makeup artist will tell you that your makeup is only going to look as good as your skin looks underneath. So skincare is so, so, so important. So always make sure that you have a moisturizer. It doesn't have to be this one. This is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. This is the one that I use. I love this moisturizer. I've been using this moisturizer for a couple years now. Always, always, always put moisturizer on underneath your makeup. And even if you're not wearing makeup, always wear a moisturizer. Even if your skin is oily, it still needs moisture. Keeping your skin hydrated and taking good care of your skin is the best way to prevent premature aging, along with staying out of the sun and all those kinds of things. But taking care of your skin is so important, and I can't say that enough. Also, if you are over the age of 18, you need an eye cream. These are two that I'm using right now. I would say my favorite is the Clinique Pep Start. But if you're look, this is a little sample size. But if you're looking for something a little bit more affordable, this Vichy Anti Wrinkle and Firming Cream is pretty good too. It's not my favorite that I've ever tried, but it's pretty affordable. I think it was about forty dollars. Eye creams are usually a little bit more expensive because they are they have so many active ingredients in to keep the signs of aging away. Always make sure that you're taking care of your skin. Make sure that you're washing your makeup off every night. I know a lot of people are guilty of that, but that's what's aging you. Wash your makeup off every night. I know it's annoying and for some people it wakes you up, but you will thank yourself in the long run. Your future self will thank you. So the next thing is primer. So a lot of people don't really understand primer. Primer is really important for sort of preparing your skin for makeup. So moisturizer does that as well, but moisturizer is more like something that seeks into the skin and primer sort of stays on top of the skin and is between your makeup and your face. So if you have oily skin, use something that's mattifying. So I use the Temp2 Base Smooth and Matte Primer and I also use Benefit Professional across my nose where I get pores. So if you have dry skin, you probably don't have a problem with pores. If you do, this is okay for dry skin as well. If you have dry skin, you likely want a primer that is more hydrating. The Too Faced Hangover Primer, I have a little sample of it right here actually. This is sort of like a small version of what the box looks like. So if it will focus. Oh, it's upside down. This is great for dry skin. I've used this before when I was like, oh, it's winter, my skin's getting dry. My skin's way too oily for this. So if you're oily, stay away from it. But if you're dry, go for it. It smells like coconuts, it's so, so good. The next step, if you decide that you want to wear foundation, I know that foundation is scary for some people, but once you start using it, you pretty much never want to stop. So I float around through three different foundations um, depending on what kind of coverage I'm looking for and what time of year it is because I have these in all different colors. So I usually every day I'll use the It Cosmetics CC Cream. This goes on like a full coverage foundation. It can be like a medium coverage if you want to sheer it out. I'm obsessed with this. I talk about this all the time on my channel. You guys are probably like, we get it. You like that CC cream, but I really, really like this. If I want a more full coverage, I go with the Marc Jacobs Remarkable. I wore this uh, a couple weeks ago. I filmed a video about my last day at MAC and I wore this foundation. It's getting a little bit old, so it didn't work as well as when it was brand new, but I still like it. It wore really well and it actually got better throughout the day. So I know I said a lot of bad things about it when I was filming that video, but it, it did really work well throughout the day and it lasted and the coverage is great. So, And then an affordable foundation, I usually wear this in the summer, uh, is the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Makeup Lotion. And I use the color Natural Buff N3. So this is obviously too dark for me right now. It actually works really well when I have a tan, like a fake tan. 
this is a great foundation for the drugstore. It says that it's full coverage. I find that it's a kind of closer to like a medium coverage, but they have one for dry and one for oily skin. This one in this bottle is better for oily skin, and then they have the True Match Lumi, which I think is better for dry skin, so a little bit more luminous. So that's a really good option for those of you who are looking to start wearing foundation and you don't necessarily know if you want to invest a lot. I don't think this is the cheapest one in the drugstore. I think it's about $20, but it's a really good foundation. It lasts for a long time and the finish is beautiful. I would say that it's just as good as a high-end foundation in my experience. So the next thing would be concealer. Whether you're wearing foundation or not, most people are probably interested in a concealer, especially this time of year where we're all nice and pale and our under eye circles are showing more than they normally are. I always use the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I'd recommend this to anybody, any age, any skin type. I haven't found anything better than this. I've been searching for years. I'm always looking for the next best thing and I have not found the next best thing yet. So Pro Longwear Concealer, I use the color NW20. This is by MAC. I think it's about 25 to 20 $27 now. Um, I love it. Obsessed. It's my holy grail. And this also doubles as an eyeshadow primer as well. So if you don't want to invest more money into an eyeshadow primer, you can use this concealer as an eyeshadow primer and it will help your eyeshadow stay on longer and it'll stop it from creasing as well. So it's a good option. So then... Once you have your base on, you probably want to set it with some type of powder. If your skin is super dry, you may not want to use powder. I always make sure that I set like underneath my eyes just so it doesn't get creased and down my nose because that's where I get super, super oily. I always use the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder, but for somebody that's starting out, this may seem like kind of a wasted step. I'm sort of in the middle about this. Like, I could live without this, but my makeup has just gone to the next level as soon as I started wearing this cream, wearing this powder. It keeps everything on, it keeps everything locked in, it stops moisture from coming through, so like oil from coming through and lifting and moving my makeup. I'm obsessed with this, it's so amazing. Plus I use it to sharpen up my contour, it's great. I would say that if you wanna have only one powder and you would like to add a little bit more coverage, the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish, mine's almost gone, is a really good option for you as well. So you can wear, the great thing about this one is that you can wear it by itself. So if you have like your moisturizer, primer, concealer, on and then you just are like, you know what, I don't feel like wearing foundation today, my skin's looking pretty good. You may be one of those really lucky people that doesn't need foundation. The people that I see and I'm super jealous of. But, if that and if that is the case, you could just throw a little bit of this on, it'll set your concealer and it'll give you a little bit of coverage and then you'll be good to go. A lot of people that I know only wear a powder and that's 100% acceptable. You do not have to wear a liquid foundation. But I like to wear this to sort of set like my cheeks and my forehead and my chin and I bring this with me throughout the day and I use it to touch up as well. So it's a really good powder. If you're looking to only have one powder, I would say go with something like this. Either this or the MAC Studio Fix powder. That's a really good option as well. Uh, if you do want to go with something like completely sheer and not add any more coverage but you want to wear a liquid, I'd go with like the Laura Mercier or the Cover Effect setting powder. Either of those are really good options too. So moving on to sort of like the more fun, I guess, part of doing your makeup, you should probably have some type of eyeshadow palette. You don't need to have an entire palette. You could buy individual shadows on their own, but if you are looking to buy an eyeshadow palette, you wanna get something like this. This is the ColourPop you had me at Hello Palette. If you're just starting to buy makeup, this is a really good option for you. It's still available on their website, and it's very affordable. The shadows are amazing, and Honestly, I've used this a few times in a couple tutorials and then it kind of got buried on the, in the bottom of my drawer, but it's an amazing, amazing palette. It's got all your browns down here, your neutrals, it's got your purples, it's got sort of like your golds, and it's got a really good mixture of matte and shimmery colors, so you'll really be able to play around and sort of see what types of looks that you like to experiment with. It's got so many colors in here. If you don't wear makeup that often or if you're just starting out with makeup, this is a really, really great palette to start with. And it's also got a really great mirror, so it's great for traveling. And it's got all of the color names on the back. It's a really good palette. I would recommend that to anybody. If you wanted something a little bit smaller that didn't have as many shadows in it, I would go with, this is filthy, but I would go with something like this, the Tartlet Tease Palette. It's got like your neutrals and it's got like your mediums and your darks. So there's only six shadows in there. It's got a mirror on there, also filthy. Um, but this is a really great palette and it smells like, like cookies kind of. I would say that if you're looking for starter palettes, go with either of these. They're both an affordable option. Obviously you get more bang for your buck with the ColourPop palette, but the Tartlet Tease palette is great as well. And if you're looking for something a little bit smaller, that's what I'd recommend. 
So you probably want a mascara. Um, likely, most adult women have already picked out their favorite mascara. My favorite mascara, and if you guys watch my channel, you'll know, is the Marc Jacobs, Remar this isn't remarkable, that's not what it's called. The Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara. This is overpriced, but I buy it anyway because I've found mascara to be extremely difficult. Uh, to find and the only thing that I found that's comparable is the L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara which at one point was the best selling mascara in the world. I'll link that for you guys down below. That's also a really really great option. So I would say the two are comparable in quality. This one stays on the lashes a little bit longer so that's where you get the higher price point justification, um, but I would say that the L'Oreal Voluminous is just as good. If you want something water resistant I'd go with the MAC Extra Extended Play Giga Black Lash. This is a great mascara as well. There's two colors in this. There's a black and a Giga Black. Apparently the Giga Black is blacker. I don't notice the difference to the same price, so whichever one they have, I would say just go with that. But this one's really great because it's not waterproof, it's water resistant. So it's going to come off with hot water, but if it's rainy or something like that, it's not gonna be like running down your face like this one will. So I use this one on the bottom and this one on the top because I'm really high maintenance. You only need one mascara and any of those options is great for you. So most people this time of year, being winter, are feeling very pale and are always asking about bronzer. So I would recommend if you're just getting started with makeup or even if you're just looking for a good bronzer and you have all kinds and you just haven't tried this one, the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, oh my god, it smells like vacation. I think the first time I bought this was in Florida. Anyway, so whenever I smell it, it just reminds me of being away on vacation in Florida. But I love this this bronzer it's amazing the only thing that I would say is I'm comparing it to like my Estee Lauder bronzer which is obviously like a high-end like almost $50 bronzer this one doesn't last as long on the skin however it blends like a dream I think I'm gonna start using this again because my Estee Lauder bronzer is just a little bit too dark for me but this is such a beautiful formula it's a great value I think it's $19.99 at the drugstore but it probably would last you the better part of a year so I would absolutely recommend this one to anybody that's getting started if you want something more high-end I also am obsessed with my Estee Lauder bronze goddess bronzer this glides on and it does not come off I find that sometimes powders will I don't know if like I wipe them off or or what the deal is but I don't find that powders last that long on me but this one does this Estee Lauder bronze goddess I have the color 01 light because I am light and I it's too dark for me so I would say that the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer also the Hoola bronzer by Benefit is really good I haven't tried like my own I've tried somebody else's and really liked it I've never bought it um, but I've heard that that one's really good too so I'll link all of these for you guys down below so when it comes to blushes people are always like what do I do like what kind of blush should I wear my advice would be to buy one blush that will pretty much go with anything for me, that's this little Tarte blush. This is what I take with me when I travel because it goes with any look that I put together. This is the color Party, three A's. Um, and it's a really super neutral blush. The only thing is this is only probably good for lighter skin tones. Um, it does kind of come off a little bit darker than I thought it initially would. However, I don't think that this would work for like super, super dark skin tones. That being said, the formula of this is amazing. So if you have a darker skin tone, definitely just pick out like a darker color. This is a great blush formula and they last on the skin all day. They're a 12 hour blush and they actually are a 12 hour blush. Like they do not come off. So these Amazon they're Amazonian clay bl blushes, so I'll link them for you guys down below. Blush is one of those things, like I find that if you buy a cheap blush, you can tell that it's cheap and that it's not good. I have a couple NYX blushes and they aren't that great. I have a couple Revlon blushes, I got rid of them, they're not that great. I haven't found a super affordable blush yet that actually works, so if you guys have any suggestions for me, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always looking to find affordable makeup and pass that, that message on to everybody else as well. So for now, the only recommendation I have is sort of expensive so sorry about that guys but if you guys do have any suggestions for blush please let me know and so on to the last part of your makeup starter kit which is my favorite part lips so I pretty much could recommend so many different lip products to you guys but I'm gonna stick with like my absolute favorites because it could definitely get overwhelming so Obviously, if you watch my channel, you know that I love MAC lipsticks. I'm actually wearing a ColourPop lippy stick right now, which is really good. And I'll link those for you guys down below because they're a really affordable, awesome option. I've had this on for like three hours and it hasn't budged. Um, but my favorite, I have to say, is MAC lipsticks because they have so many different colors, so many different textures. And although they are definitely not cheap, I think they're $21.00. 
they last forever. Like they last in the tube forever. A lot of times if they're a dryer formula, they last on your lips forever. So the two colors that I have here that are really good suggestions, especially for spring, is Speed Dial, which is this really beautiful pink color. I have to break this out and start wearing this again because it's the perfect time of year for it. I also have Fashion Revival, which actually I think was limited edition, but it's very similar to Rebel. And I love those colors. They're probably two of my favorite colors. I also have a Revlon lipstick here. Revlon lipsticks are probably the best lipsticks in the drugstore, honestly. This color that I have here is mink. It's like a brownish color. It's super, super awesome. Very glossy, very long wearing for a drugstore lipstick. They're so awesome. The other suggestion that I have is the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lips. These Ultra Satin Lips are so amazing. They last for so long on the lips and they don't dry your lips out. So they do have an ultra matte formula, so if you want a super, super dry lip, it, those honestly don't budge, but I find that they dry my lips out a little bit. The Ultra Satin Lips are kind of like a nice balance. They stay on for a long time, not as long as the mattes, but they do stay on, probably till like you would eat or something like that. And then you just, even after you eat, you only need to touch them up a little bit. But I just find that the coverage is great on the lip and they're just absolutely beautiful. So these would be my three favorites. Um, for lipsticks. ColourPop and Revlon are both affordable and then MAC is a little bit higher end. So. so that is everything you guys for this makeup starter kit. So I hope that you guys got something out of this video. I hope that you kind of have a little bit more direction if you're looking to sort of build your makeup collection a little bit or if you're looking to, you know, start from scratch and sort of like what am I going to look for? What do I need? I have no idea. So don't feel like you have to go and buy all of these things and please don't feel like you have to go and spend all of your hard earned money on makeup. Maybe start like, you know, one paycheck you'll buy, you know, your foundation and the next paycheck you'll buy your primer and the next one you'll buy a lipstick and so on. So just don't feel like you have to go out and go broke because you want to buy makeup. You have to be sensible and you have to be responsible as well. But when you do decide that you want to invest, you can refer back to this video. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more from me. I put up two to three videos every week and I would love to have you join me. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.